One of the main points of Ecclesiastes is outside of knowing God, there is no happiness. Without God, you will end up worshiping money, and that money will fly away. Without God, you will make friends, and they will betray you or die or both. Without God, you will work and then die, and all your work will be gone. Without God, you will drink wine and still have a heavy heart at the end of the glass. Without God, you will marry and find yourself lonely. Without God, you will try to be wise with all your heart and still find fools who come up on top of you. Without God, you will save money, but it will be inherited by knaves and greedy people. Without God, you will attempt to do great things, and they will nonetheless be forgotten and overturned by the simple. But with God, we can drink and eat and be merry. With God, you can enjoy friends, but not only rely on them. With God, you can marry and worship God together. With God, you can work, but not make work your God. With God, you can make money, but not be someone who serves money. With God, you can rest, you can eat good food, you can love your wife, you can enjoy your labor, and you can, why all of that will make sense, why all of that will come together despite the confusion, despite the chaos, is because through this book, the call is to remember God even in the days of your youth. Enjoy the peace of trusting the one who is in control even whenever you feel absolutely out of control. And remember that someone who is terminally sad, terminally miserable, a total pessimist and hates just everything, it's not a true person. Because the truth of the matter, when you read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes all together, the whole truth is this. Yes, the world has delusions. The world has pain in it. But with God, there is truth. With God, there is healing. Yes, most of the world is full of broken cisterns that will leave you high and dry. But God has offered himself to you as the fountain of living water. He's the head of that fountain, and he will take the vanity and the emptiness. Essentially, that's what vanity means, emptiness, like a soap bubble. Looks really pretty, but nothing inside. Just blows away, pops without any, uh, with, in a very short time. But with God, there's glory. With God, the delights and the joys are real and can be found And so Ecclesiastes reminds us that we cannot beat the clock. We cannot beat the grave. Ten out of ten people will pass from this life to the next. And depending on how you live your life, the people will either rejoice or they will lament. But Ecclesiastes bids us to do this. Get real. Get a grip. Be a man. Be a woman. Humble yourself. Remember that you are not sovereign. You are not God. You are dust that God has breathed life into. And the work that he put in your hand, the time that he's uh, put in your life is meant to be used for his glory and for his honor. And so one of the lines of Ecclesiastes says this, remember, a living dog is better than a dead lion. You're alive. You might not be a lion, but you're alive. And so live this life for the honor and the glory of God. Remember, it is God who made you. And I found that, you know, some people, even Christians, will say that they don't like the book of Ecclesiastes. They say it's depressing. They say that it, it rains on their parade. It only does that if you want to be God. It only is a dis depressing book to somebody who wants to be in control and somebody who wants to have life uh, by the straps. But the true freedom and liberation is, is when you read this book and realize, I'm not in control. I'm not my maker. I, I, I don't have the ability or even the heart to fix everything. But I do have a little bit of life and guidance from God and wisdom from God. And he wants me to be faithful, fear him and keep his commandments. And so praise God, I'm not God. Praise God that he's in control. He's going to see that his will and his purposes come to pass. And it doesn't totally depend on me at all. I'll end by 